Yeah, so I did write this during the lockdown mm -hmm. and it was it was a shame because we hadn't had a chance to properly be in a room and me listen to you play. Um, so what we ended up doing, I think I asked you to create a video for me. Yeah, I think I went downstairs in, um, <laughs> in the place where I was staying and I said, um, yeah, this is this works, this doesn't work. I mean, that was a really good starting point because it was the you know, this is how fast I can double tongue, triple mm. tongue. This is, you know, if you're going to do the multiphonics, I think you mentioned, if you're going to do it, you do it low, low in mm -hmm. the register. And all those things I have written for trombone before, but not, not in this capacity, not to this extent. Mm -hmm. So I still needed, and I needed refreshing anyway. And also to hear it from you, because I think every player will have things they either really like doing, don't like doing. And I, I didn't want to write something you didn't, that you hated playing. Mm -hmm. I wanted you to mm -hmm. think, oh, I'm, I'm excited to play this again. And then I think I went away on my own for quite some time. <laughs> and basically, I was very scared to send it to you, to be honest, because <laughs> I never have to, composers never actually have to send drafts, or I, I yeah. never have to send drafts. I, re I remember you doing a, a playback. You shared your screen on Zoom yeah. with me. Yeah. And you kept telling me not to listen to certain bits, because you play it all <laughs> yeah. the way through. Don't listen to this bit. Don't no, <laughs> So that is one of the main themes of the yeah. concerto <laughs> and begins the first movement and the second movement. Yes, and not the third. And not the third <laughs> movement. Definitely. There is a reason for that though. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, that was one of the first ideas that um, I came up with when we had our first chat and initially about the concerto and the initial marking on your trombone part, I think it says to play as if you're totally oblivious to your surroundings. Yeah. <laughs> Which is quite nice, actually, <laughs> yeah. a trombone player, not having to blend with it. Exa exactly. So I, I basically wanted the first movement to start in a really quirky way. The main, what it's about is a person going about their daily life. Um, it's very sort of simple and then plodding along. Um, and that's when the first trombone entry comes in. And basically, as the movement goes on, they sort of realise their ability to you know make a difference or to excel in their in their sphere whatever that is and because i wrote this during the pandemic that was something that i loved seeing you know ordinary people doing incredible things <laughs> Well, for me, I absolutely love this combination. I've, I've figured out why so much, because with orchestra, composing is very lonely, um, and I do love people. <laughs> um, and so when you spend months and months and months on your own working on an orchestral piece with very little feedback, I mean, I do tend to ask friends, you know, is this possible, is this possible on the different instruments, but it's not a very intimate collaboration mm. when, when writing orchestral pieces. And so this, but, but yet that's my favourite thing to write. And so this, I got to explore all the textures of the orchestra, but then work with a soloist on the more fun things, the music, the music side, how should we do this? Oh, I think this should be even shorter. Yeah. Those extra level details that mm. I miss when it's just a group of so many people and you can't necessarily have that creative time. Yeah. So that's why it was really, really nice working, working with you. Yeah. And fantastic for me to have the opportunity to kind of really collaborate. Yeah. Um, yes, it was over a pandemic and it, was, it had its challenges, but um, yeah, I don't think I've ever been able to do something like that to that extent yeah. with a composer before. So that was really, really exciting for me. I spent a lot of time thinking about whether this would be a piece for trombone with an orchestra accompaniment or whether I wanted it to be a real piece for trombone and orchestra equally. And while I know it's a concerto and there are moments that are obviously very much all about you, um, I did want this second movement to be 
very much a joint piece where it is just a piece of music that happens to have the trombone shining through throughout it. Mm. And so with this bit textually, I sort of wanted you to completely come in and out of the texture. So we have you within that moment starting, starting low, coming up, getting high and going back down. And there are moments where you're less heard and moments where you come through to the forefront. Um, so this was something I really wanted for this movement, which came across really nicely. I wasn't sure if it would work or not. Mm. <laughs> but, yeah. but I think also the, the range of the trombone and the dynamic range as well, so the, the note range and the yeah. dynamic range, um, really kind of lends itself to that. It's yeah. able to come in and out of textures and play exactly. with different sounds and yeah. all these things that people may not have expected of it, it can do. Yeah. Um, so it's really nice to actually get to do that in yeah. a concerto. Yeah. So in the beginning of the second movement, you've written some multiphonics in the solo part um, just to kind of thicken out the texture ever so slightly and get a kind of chordal idea. I'll just try and demonstrate that. So we have the thirds and then we have the fifths as well. Yeah. With the fifths obviously a lot kind of sparser. Yeah. Um, but just one of the many things you can do on a, a big brass instrument. Um, mm. Yeah, generally the bigger the instrument, the easier it is to do that. So you would have the most joy on the tuba, um, yeah. but the trombone also works quite well. You yeah. probably couldn't do it so well on the trumpet or yeah. the French horn. And you had said when it's in the lower register, it works much better than in the higher register. Yes, to get the spacing, to get the intervals and to get the voicing right, you need yeah. the kind of bass to be on the instrument and then sing higher. higher. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there was a, there was a real window where the, where the trombone was being developed and we added all this extra tubing um, and the sound changed. There was a real opportunity, I think, for composers to explore that maybe 100 years ago, even 70, 80 years ago, and it didn't happen. Um, but now I think it is happening. We've had other composers write works in the last five, ten years for the trombone that have gone down really, really well, been really well received. Um, and I think we're getting there. It's a long process, but... In the third movement, that's when it gets very, very technically demanding and you've written some very, very fast double tonguing, uh, which is another feature of a brass instrument. Um, yeah, very technically demanding, but very um, exciting, alive. And you mentioned the third movement being very much a statement of a short kind of burst of energy. Um, and I think we've got that with the double tonguing. So I'll try and um, try and show. I think there's a certain level of privilege that I feel to be able to premiere a work like this, um, such a great addition to the repertoire. Thank you. 